Luke 11 and 1, as he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to teach you if you don't know how to pray. So bow ahead with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you this hour just giving you, dear God, the glory that's due to you. As I hallow your name, as I brag about you, and as I talk about you, I, dear Father, dear Lord, just want to be obedient in what I study, dear God. So help me to help others, those who don't know how to pray, and even those who do, they can learn from this lesson. So, Father, dear Lord, I come in this community, especially 99.9 WOOPFM. The word of God is for us to learn how to pray because prayer makes a difference. And you're going to learn something in this lesson, believe you me. So tag someone and ask someone to join you because without a shadow of a doubt, prayer will change your life. But you need to know how to pray. You need to know God is calling us to do. And to do means to communicate with him. So, Father, dear Lord, I just want, dear God, our listeners, when they hear this, even in, 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 on the Internet to come, those, dear God, on Facebook, I want them to know, dear Father, what the Word of God is teaching us. So I thank you for this opportunity, and throughout, I'll be praying for others. I want, dear God, I know in my devotion, you said, dear Father, that someone will come to know you. And that's what this is all about. So my desire, dear Lord, is to bring someone to repentance, to confess, and to accept you in this hour. And whenever they hear it, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hello again, everyone who is listening. And I just want you to know I had a great week, beautiful week. God has been blessing in our community. And I can go on and on and tell you the marvelous week with the Lord, especially. But I want you to get your Bible because I only have an hour, like you know, and I'm just so excited about this lesson because I've learned a whole lot, and I want you to turn to Matthew, get your Bible, and again, my favorite book, like you know, I know the Sunday School, Evangelic, and the Church of God, this is their book, and all the, the professors and doctors and all of them who are involved, I thank God for them and what they had present in this book that I can teach it, so... It talk about here, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us, Lord, how to pray. And, and, and in those days, back then, as we see in the lesson, the disciples, they recognized something in Jesus. They recognized that Jesus' prayer, he had a prayer life, okay? And this produces results. They saw it. And, and I'm going to get you to, to understand that when you see someone with a prayer life, but the best person going to the Bible and see how Jesus, Jesus' prayer life that produced results, they knew it was from the time he spent, they spent with the Father, that Jesus performed miracles, and he spoke revelations, okay? And he revealed to them from heaven, like which no one had heard and seen before, okay? The disciples recognized in Matthew, go on to Matthew 10, 1, Matthew chapter 6, okay? They watched Jesus and his character, and, and, and they watch his attributes and what he was doing. And they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. From this message, clear, if Jesus was perfect in every way, still. And he had to pray. And he had to listen to instruction from his father. Okay? How much more you think today? Come on now. We need to pray. Then Jesus had to ask for instruction on how to pray. And, and the outline in this message is telling us this, that, you know, review implements in the Lord's Prayer. That's what I'm going to focus a lot on, teaching on the Lord's Prayer, because that's the prayer Jesus left with us. That's the Lord's Prayer. We have uh, many other prayer in the Bible. You know, we, we, we focus a lot sometime on um on John chapter 17. You know, Jesus teaches disciples. But the truth of this lesson, the central truth is believers can learn how to pray by following Jesus' method, okay? His model. You can learn how to pray. So like I said, go in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 11. 
If you get your Bible, I want you to, because I, um, um, and yeah, I'm not going to, okay, instruction for praying in Matthew. And when thou prayest, it talk about, I'm going to be giving points on a lot of this, because a lot in this lesson to present, but I just going to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide, because I know that you can receive results when you pray. There's no fact, there's no doubt about that. Okay, and I can go on and talking about a little of the hypocrites and those who prayed out in the street. Like Jesus told Paul, he hate hypocrites. And those who, you know, back then some of the leaders was just out there, I guess you call portraying themselves, trying to, um, like he said here, they were... Um, Addressing the public prayer usually in vain display and speaking for people to hear them. But we have to understand God wants us to pray to him. And there should be needs we are praying for and praying for people. Okay? There are nearly over 600 uses of the term Father. We pray to our Father, our Heavenly Father. Okay? We will give further discussion in this prayer so on. So I'm jotting down things. And I'm going to put some quotes in between. This quote said, God tells us to, God tells us to burden him with whatever burden us. You have a burden, take it to God in prayer. Address God with an intimate sense of fatherhood. It is interesting that either thy father, your father, our father, or his heavenly father is used by Jesus at least 10 times in Matthew chapter 6. And we need to know that God is willing that we all come to repentance, okay? Reverence and honor God's name. Express desire for God's kingdom and will to be manifest on earth. God, earth was occasionally created to be heaven and gracious desire for us down here. Request personal provision to be met, okay? When you go before God, you want personal provision met. Pray for spiritual needs, inclusion, problem, and relationship. God is willing to do that. Okay, request help on in tomorrow's in the film. Look like I have some guests. Y'all gonna have to understand many times, and I'm gonna put a pin in you like they say, that the spirit just lead some of my um, friends and people who I training and helping to build our community. And it seems like we get one just walking. So I'm gonna have to, I, I'm learning. I'm learning that God works in mysterious ways. So just bear with me. Just bear with me. I have some friends out there. Honor thy father. Honor thy father, and he will do what he asks us to do. Okay, honor thy father. God is willing. Prayers, okay, it says, pray not, prayers not felt by us are seldom heard by God. Okay, prayers not felt by us. If you can't feel your prayer, okay, this is by Philip Henry, are seldom heard by God. So you have to pray with fervently prayer. Okay, pray intelligently not repetitionally okay pray believing god it says in matthew 6 verse 7 but when he pray don't use vain repetition as the heathen did for they think that they shall be heard for their own speaking but in verse 8 be not eat therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things you ought to pray okay no god know what you ought to pray about but he wants us to pray all swell Chambers said, prayer is not an exercise. It is the life of the saints. That's our life. That's our prayer line, our lifeline, prayer. Okay? God is willing to do great things for us when we pray. There were pagan people back then. And, 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 I'm, and like I said, I'm, have you ever noticed that the way God says grace before a meal, the way we say grace, sometimes it's just repetition, you know? We have to understand for the Christian, God has given us, and if God already knows our needs, why should we bother to pray, some may ask, because sharing a part of intimate fellowship, all healthy relationship thrives on two parties knowing each other's heart. God wants to know our heart, you know, share with him, you know. He knows our needs, but he wants us to share it with him. He wants us to ask him. He wants us to, you know, be a part of what he's doing, Okay. When we come before the Lord, we shall not put our brains in neutral, but rather search our hearts to share 
with him our intermost thoughts intermost thoughts follow christ's example okay let's follow his example and do what he asks us to do okay i'm skipping up through this the lord's prayer includes five different requests five and you may want to jot these down as i go the first two have to do with god's feelings okay god interests and his priority that's in luke 11 and 2. hello be thy name means to set apart treat of holy okay treat of treat tre of holy okay that's a treat of holy thus the instruction is to pray that god's name be revealed by all people all people mean all people okay he's willing that all thy kingdom come was not new for his disciples both john the baptist and jesus had declared thy kingdom of heaven is at hand the kingdom of heaven is at hand matthew 3 2 and 4 to 17. thy will be done is echo of thy kingdom come thy kingdom come and glenn station said um he said heavenly biblically means the realm where god rules fully and god's will is done jesus is affirming that god really is the ruler and that god really is our father presents bringing deliverance into our lives okay not out of our daily bread give us this day lord our daily bread the third request that's what it is for god to supply everything that is necessary necessary to sustain life okay it is acts daily showing a continuing dependence on god that's why he said give us this day our daily daily we need to go before him daily just like in the children the, the, the manna from heaven and, and with the children of israel they had to go daily before god for their food like the israelites manna and the wilderness we should trust god to meet our daily needs in our in our desert time as well as our smooth season adam clark makes four observations about praying for daily bread number one god is the author and dispenser of a of a temporal as well as spiritual good god he have merit no kind of good form from his hand and therefore must receive it as free gift give us we ask him give us lord give us lord give us we must depend on him daily for support we are not permitted to ask anything for tomorrow give us today lord we want it today and then tomorrow we go back for another day okay and someone said this is wingate pj wingate says, give us this day our daily bread is probably the most perfectly constructed and useful sentences ever set down in the english language we need to be fed spiritually we need to be fed physically emotionally ask god each day for our daily bread okay god having promised neither luxuries or super fluffy flurries please give us our daily bread you know daily bread that's what we ask him for sin depths and temptation and deliverance that's the other one number four and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but lord deliver us from evil yes the fourth one the fourth request clark said reaches to the believers struggling against the devil and his devices the devil works hardest in the realm of relationship okay in our relationship we have to understand this if he can keep walls built between us and god or between us and other people then his work is accomplished and we need to stop that okay don't let him stop you in relation he does this to reigns of imagine offense he'll make you believe things which is not true consider the account of john the baptist and i can skip some of that okay let me go down in here the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out his kingdom of things that offense and those who practice his lawlessness he will read up those things and people that are used by devil to create offense 
okay? We cannot fix every offense or trespasses that come our way, but we can forgive and let Jesus handle the rest, okay? Forgiveness is the key in all relationship. Forgiveness is the key in all relationship. I'm jumping through this because I have some company coming. The reason Jesus came to earth was to provide a means of our being restored to God through forgiveness of our sins. In turn, we shall forgive those who offend us, okay? The fifth request by Clark said is for, no, this is part of the Bible. Y'all got to excuse me. The fifth request is to help in dealing with temptation, okay? Dealing with temptation. The disciples understood that voluntarily, that, that, that ver, ver, that voluntarily to sin, they were to ask God to keep them from places where they would be tempted, okay? You have to ask God. Go before him. Provisions through prayer, okay? Parables about persistent prayer. This is uh, um, in verse 5 and 8. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight? And I'm going to summarize and paraphrase this. You go to one of your friends, one of your good friends, and you said, hey, I need some milk for my baby. I don't have no money. You go to your friend and your friend said, okay, mid midnight, you waking them up and they have their family. That's a friend. Now, if you go to a, a visitor, someone you just on the street, and you stop in the middle of the night in some places, but you persistent with them. And you ask them because they don't know you. You know, this is what he's talking about in verse 8. And those who rise up and give him a because they may still rise up. And that friend, that visitor, they don't really know you, but you were very persistent. You were persistent. You said, hey, I'm out here in the dungeon, in the back of the woods, nowhere. I really need help. You know, that's not your friend. You don't know. I mean, what I'm saying is your friend will do it instantly because they know you. But a stranger... You're going to have to be, hey, keep calling and knocking and blowing horn and say, help me, help me, Lord, help me. Some of you have been there. You know what I'm saying? And this was Jesus and the Son of Man because God has adopted us as believers. We have a father, child relationship with him. Thus, when you was persistent with that visitor and that, who you don't know, God acts in us the same way. Ask him. He is a heavenly father. What more you think he will do when someone you don't know help you? What more our Heavenly Father will do? So what he's telling you is call upon him, okay? The neighbors did it. Your friend did it. A stranger did it. It was only after constant knocking, knocking, knocking that the finally rose and they got up for you, okay? Many will casually do it. Like I said, excuse me, I'm jumping through this. Help me, Lord. In all the words, the man is needed to do so in the middle of the night as he did. Okay, I don't summarize all that. Go to... The result of persistent prayer, okay, the result of persistent prayer, the result, this is the result, verse 9 in Matthew 5, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you, and seek, and he shall find, knock, and it shall be opened to you, for everyone that asks, receive, everyone that asks, receive. this is the word of God in verse 10, and he that seeketh, find it, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened to you. Okay? God is willing. He is willing. You have to ask and be persistent. The meaning here is to keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. The three words, the three words, each gives a different emphasis. Ask implies something one needs. And needs are only God can provide. Seek indicates something that has been lost. Knock means to gain admis ad ad admittance, okay? You get in, okay? The obvious question is why persistence is necessary. Don't God hear us when we first pray? Perhaps there's an answer of God's message to Jeremiah. He shall seek me and find me. Then he shall search for me with all, with all, not part, all your heart. In process of asking, seeking, and knocking, we do the soul searching that brings us to complete, okay, dedication of our heart. Paul exhorted believers to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. I'm going to ask my guest to come on in. Um, 
hear um, when we ask, seek, knock, and pray, how do we um, um, differentiate between what is selfish and what is um, legitimate? Okay, this is where we need to be the best gift, the Holy Spirit. That's what comes in. The Holy Spirit, the Father is willing to give us the Spirit to help us in our praying. Paul said the Spirit also help us in our weakness. And we've been there. Some of us know that we've been so weak. But the Holy Spirit, when we groan with it, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit itself make intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be offered. Romans 8 and 26. Jude said, building yourself up on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, come right now upon us, dear God. I'm asking you, dear Lord Jesus, let your Holy Ghost come upon us right now, dear Lord. If you are praying for the Holy Spirit help, we need not to worry about, okay, validity of this thing. We ask, he will sort them out, okay? He will sort it out. Don't worry. You pray and you intercede. The Heavenly Father, goodness, okay, goodness. Oh, my God. I'm going to go on and on and on. But I'm going to let my guests, y'all, come on in. If he shall, in three questions process, Jesus used um, high pro, this is a high pro, high pro lead, to make his point. Bread, fish, and eggs. Listen to this. This is very interesting. Bread, fish, and eggs. And I'm going to close on this. These are nutritious stuff, forms of food that sustain physical life, Okay. In contrast to stone, okay, listen to this, the stone and the, 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 the lack of food, certain tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread in Matthew chapter 14, while serpents and scorpions can both carry poisons that destroy them. Like, there is another way of looking at it as well. The serpent was poisonable, okay? He was poisoning. A water snake used in a bait in fishing. When a serpent roll up itself, it will resemble an egg. I was wondering, oh, why you use an egg? You have to know these comparison, life application commentary. Um, talk about this. A real father, be godly or not, will not treat his child so cruelly, giving him something, a snake, okay? But God is not just any father. He is never selfish or stingy, okay? He only gives the greatest gift, the best, which is the Holy Spirit. Whom he promised to set after Jesus made his sacrifice to restore our relationship. Because of his loving care for us, we need never be afraid to ask him. Never be afraid to talk to God. And I'm going to bring some of the Jesus right now. Never be afraid. Ask him. You know, he answers. We always reflect his total care for our welfare. God is willing that all. Um, Sheila well said, God's love for us is so far above what we think we need. And his answering spring out of the depths of his mercy and wisdom. Father, I ask in you, Lord Jesus, right now to bring their God someone to you right now. ABC, ask God to come into your heart right now. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and you're listening to me right now when you hear this, I want you to know God wants you. And he wants you to accept him. He wants you to know that First, you have to acknowledge he is our heavenly father and he wants you to pray to him. And first, you got to believe he is God and you got to believe he can heal you. Believe you can, you can be new. You can get rid of your sins. And that's what you need to do. Spill it out now and say, Lord, come into my heart. Bring me salvation. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. I need you, Lord Jesus. Wash me and just confess your sins. Just confess it. Just say, Lord. I want to live for you. I love you. I know you died on the cross with me, and I know you are coming back again, and I want to be ready. So, Lord, right now, take away my sins. Take it away. Holy Spirit, take it away. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Those who are listening right now, it's the Holy Spirit to cleanse you, wash you. This new season, summer is coming. Thank God, Judy. You know, COVID season is getting better. We're getting out of the season where you're going to summer. Ask God to give you life, abundant life, so you can enjoy life to the fullest. God is willing to do it. And then you now you say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me new life. And you tell somebody. You ask someone, how can I um, 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 keep this salvation? How can I come? Simple. Let them know. Read your Bible and pray. Talk to God each day. And he will help you. He will guide you. He will bring you to everything. God is willing that none should perish. God is willing that none should perish. All come to repent. 
in conclusion, because I'm trying to get these young men in. Studies have been done on the power of prayer as, as um, relating to health, with prayer being seen as a positive influence. Okay? You all sit down. Um, um, the, however, most researchers still regard prayer as merely a positive. But let me tell you, that's a mind uh, um, of the minds of those who engage. Of, in other words, it is, poor, it, it is what they say in prayer is, is, I could talk from my experience. I was healed of lupus. Okay, it's therapeutic. You got to believe God. He can heal you. When I pray and I ask God, he healed me. Okay, God can heal you. Prayer gets results. You know, we have a father who is interested in our needs and our desire. Okay, just remember, those people who were negative with prayer, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You got to believe God in all things. He can do it. He's willing that none shall come to repentance and all come to know it. I ask you that, Lord Jesus, bless us and keep us. And I have minister. Um, um, is this microphone? I'm not sure. And I'm going to cut off Facebook, and God bless you all. Thank you for coming.